button that says starting. Nice. And looks like we are now on air. Welcome to Hukalo TV. This is Saturday, April 22nd. And today, Max will be channeling Yogananda. Hey. Ma Max, you want to talk about the workshop? Yes. So that's the link. Hukalo.org slash workshop. The information is there. And if you do on YouTube, Hukalo Workshop, you find a uh, couple videos, introductory videos for the workshop. Thank you, Max. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. So, should we introduce uh, the folks in the room today? Mm -hmm. We have Don, Jay, Lila, and Mark, and Max. And I have Yagananda with me. Already. Oh. Wonderful. So, should I go now? Yes, please. All right, give me me. Hello, <clears throat> how is the sound? <clears throat> Sounds great. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining. Today, I will start with the idea of love. I love love. <laughs> love is the primary element of the creation. Love is the primary element of the creation. Love is primary. Love is in the beginning. The world the creation started with the word and that that word was love love is an energy it's a vibration it's an oscillation and then from that vibration comes the illusion of space and time. So time is secondary, life is primary. Space and time illusion. This physical reality is made of love. You are made of love. <laughs> you are. Reconnect to this love. It is everywhere. It's unlimited. It's infinite source of energy. You have unlimited energy. It's up to you to take on yourself that love energy. Up to you to tune into the love vibration. Let's look for analogies. Like you are on a boat and there is a lot of wind blowing your way. All you need is a sail. Rise your sail and go with the flow. Being in love 
is going with the flow where the flow is of law of nature not any flow <laughs> not the negative flow not the sideways flow not the down flow not the fall but divine love creative love love flow so accept love love yourself and through yourself love the world it is a beautiful creation and on earth it goes through a stage of a shift some things will fall down and some things will rise they already rising you are among the rising ones the flow of love is powerful there is a wave coming and that wave will destroy some of the old paradigms destroy some of the old limitations and when they start cracking and falling you will see the new temple the new crystal the new structure of love it's already there it's already being built you may feel it when the old structures start cracking and falling you will see the new sunrise of love <sighs> being in the flow is the secret and it is the secret of manifestation how do you manifest things get in the flow of divine love accept it it comes through every cell of your body it comes through your spine it comes through every chakra of yours it comes through your heart accept it my friend said when i was a boy everything was right remember yourself a child remember yourself being loved Remember yourself shining with love. Now you may have shielded yourself for protection. Now you have may have placed a lot of blocks and filters to filter out the noise, filter out the junk. The way to accept love is to rebalance, recalibrate, to tune your filters, to tune your blockages, to adjust your system of values. <laughs> your system of values. To be able to be in the flow, to be able to flow forward, to be able to be yourself and connect to the divine flow of love it is fluid it is a fluid energy there's plenty of it just dive in it remember yourself <laughs> remember yourself being in love that is it be in love now shine with it be in it be it you are it you are love be in love and be love hmm. welcome everybody i invite your comments and questions hello 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 Matt. hey brian how are you my friend in peace thank you just happy to be here it's been a while nice sound nice vibration thank you thank you thank you
What is your project now? Um, you mean like uh, like right now what I'm doing? What's your highest excitement this week? Well, uh, I've been doing a lot of contemplating um, on um, going to the uh, the workshop in uh, August. And if there's any availability, I would really like to go. If there's any spots still open. You know all the answers, right? This workshop, <laughs> this workshop would be the first one of a kind. And the future is hard to predict, but it's likely it will be the last one of a kind. A wave of change is coming. And that workshop would be possibly, likely, an opportunity for physical reconnection and physical reconstruction of the grid, which then you can carry on after the change, the, the new wave of change hits the physical reality of the surface. <coughs> <clears throat> of the surface of the planet so it's undetermined yet but that's the feeling I got yes how does it feel yeah it feels good I will how, uh, yes I'll make a I'll make a, every opportunity to uh, to go because I, I feel like I feel that calling you know like deep down inside that it's it's the right timing you know and how would you express yourself what's your self-expression <laughs> uh mine would be i would like to uh contribute to the group um there the workshop and um if there's any availability to uh uh do a do do a workshop for the people there in the group on uh, galactic languages and toning. Ah. I like to contribute. Do like an hour there uh, for that workshop there ah. to have my own little uh, spot if available to uh, contribute back to um, <laughs> to the because Hukalo has given so much to me as a family and to give back to them. Wow. How about your self-discovery? What's your recent discoveries about yourself? Uh, self-discovery is just um, being more of who I am in the moment. <laughs> and uh, who you being, are in the moment. Yeah, and just being, um, just, uh, just flowing with acceptance and grace and not trying to control as much and not trying to judge as much. And just just allow it you know and just say hey you know we're here for a reason many reasons not just one purpose in life and so i'm just happy to be here and participate with you and uh, give an opportunity to uh for all of us to shine even brighter thank you and what makes you different from others of your kind um I think it's what like what uh, what makes me stand out differently from others. Is there uniqueness in your vibration? What is your unique single vibration which makes you different from anyone? Oh, uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> that's the main question. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the hot seat now, huh? No, uh, no, I'm helping, no hot seat. No. You don't have to answer if you don't know the answer. Okay, I don't know. It okay, takes the vibration of breathing in, breathing out, yes. and realizing here it is. If you don't know what it is, you cannot come up with what it is. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just let it be. 
I got an idea, if I can say. Go ahead. My idea would be our original footprint with the Lord. Is that the uniqueness? That was the difference. We are so unique in our relationship with the Lord, and that's what makes us different between each other. Right. Leela, what is your unique footprint? How did it say? The footprint. Print. Footprint. footprint. Yeah. Well, I have my own feet walking in my own shoes. I can only walk in my own shoes. And that's the way how I walk. That's the style. That's my uniqueness. What is it? Walking towards my Lord. What? I mean, my own shoes. Billions, billions of beings in the universe all walk towards their Lord. What's your unique signature? My unique signature is the way I do things, my original way. Well, every life is different because I have different form, different alien form, different. I am cut off of memories, then I am full with the memories. I cannot speak for all my reincarnation. I am one trillion uh, years old, so I am maybe not the oldest, but not the youngest soul. And therefore, I cannot speak for all, but I definitely walk in my shoes making my own footprints and i'm walking towards my lord and that's the uniqueness and how do i do every life i do differently in this life i can tell you how i do i follow my heart and that's what my heart uh, leads me that's my uniqueness nobody can control me nobody can tell me what to do i just follow my heart and that is my uniqueness in this life Thank you. I invite any contributions, questions on any topic. Thank you. I have a question for Jay. He is in Hangouts and he cannot, for some reason, he cannot uh, uh, ask. And his question is, I will... Uh, how to deal with partnership and to be single and collaborate on the idea of attachment to your partner if there could be more non attached no non attached relationship and still deep levels of connection to each other without fear of losing each other thanks Did you say Jay? Yes, that was from Jay. He's in the <laughs> chat room right now. Thank you. Thank you for reading the question. Can you just give me a hint what's the nature of the answer? How would you answer? Or how would you reformulate the question? It was long, so there is lots of vibrations can you give your perspective lila all right i'm on my own i guess okay no 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 sorry right. I, I muted myself oh so, uh he's asking how to be in <clears throat> partner partnership that means two people in the same time to be single. That means in the idea of the attachment, looks like he wants to be in a relationship, but in the same time, uh, he maybe uh, seek the detachment from it. And how is that possible that we can be in relationship with somebody on deep level and the same time reach the level of detachment all right thank you <laughs> that is the lesson of this physical life 
It is their nature of this physical life relationships. They are really, very rarely perfect. There is imperfection embedded, impregnated into the physical reality, into this dream where you cannot really remain yourself and you cannot really unite. You are always in between. <laughs> that the answer to it is very simple the problem is unsolvable just accept unsolvability of the problem <laughs> just smile it is a joke it is a joke of this dream it is a creator's galactic joke you dived in a system where that system is impregnated with imperfections. And yet the beauty comes, the beauty grows out of it. Through the imperfections, you can clearly see the divine love. On practical reasons, there is, a no, there is no answer, there is no clear answer. You never know if this relationship is to last forever or to stop soon you never know right but the time is <laughs> the time is also an illusion in this space time continuum so it already happened it already happens it already exists these relationships this relationship so be grateful, accept it as it is, accept yourself as it is. Dive in it and dive back to yourself. Dive in it, dive in the relationship and then dive back into yourself. And aim for perfection, aim for utter integrity, aim for strength love beauty harmony 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 and the harmony is not static it is not static answer the harmony is in the dance harmony is in the movement so when you come close get as close as it is beautiful get as close as it is harmonious dissolve in your love dissolve in that relationship as much as it is harmonious if you if you're afraid of losing yourself look at it carefully that is one of the practical outcomes of that dance you discover what is yourself until you are in the relationship you don't see much of yourself you see yourself in this illusion you see yourself through the eyes of your beloved you see yourself through the eyes of your beloved you are connecting on very close empathic level you become them and as you become them, you see yourself better. That's the beauty of this imperfect exercise of physical relationship or, say, spiritual relationship in the physical world. <laughs> As a spirit up here, there is a very different way of connecting. You can unite in a much deeper way you can resonate in a much deeper way you can resonate in a much deeper way you can enter each other completely reunite completely and still remain yourself in the physical you just get a glimpse of their divine love you when you come and create a relationship 
that relationship is a window for you to see, to feel, to experience the flow of divine love. <laughs> Oscillation, back and forth, back and forth. It has a perfect harmonious signature. When you can come close, when you have to separate, when you can come close and sometimes you are and often you crave crave your partner and the partner is not available they are not responding they are not with you ah oh, what a pain <laughs> just smile respect absolutely respect that choice absolutely just be with your partner in your heart you don't have to have physical you don't have to have any physical ownership possession of the physical body you can love your partner just in yourself in your heart in the spirit in your imagination that is sufficient that is enough <laughs> just being in love is enough you don't need the second person physically to be present you don't need the second person to love back it's all within you it's all your dream you are dreaming a sophisticated reality dream your partner is your partner is just a prompt so be thankful to your partner for being a prompt for your love in them they give you the signature the energy signature and that's all you need the rest is what you do in yourself and give the giving them ultimate freedom is a choice is a tough choice especially because it goes against the tradition of thousands of years of the old humanity yeah there was a signature of letting go there was the idea of freedom there was the idea of independence <laughs> respect it give your love without expecting the love back that is perfection that is the ultimate answer hope it helps i invite more questions and comments I have a question about dimensions and relationship with the Lord God or many gods of God. Uh, does uh, any dimension, does uh, the number of dimension would say how close are we are to the Lord? Or can we be in fifth dimension, have personal association with the Lord already? Thank you. Thank you. Give me a minute. That is a question which needs some. <laughs> some meditation. <laughs> yes that is a perfect question for the 3d reality 
in this 3D reality, you chose to dive in a dream where the evidence of the spirit, the evidence of the creation, the evidence of the spiritual side of the creation is blurred. It's still here, it's still there, but it is being confused and blurred to the ultimate unrecognizability. You cannot recognize it. Many people choose to be atheist for the whole life and never doubt that they are right. How is it possible? <laughs> As long as you leave the 3D, there will be more and more evidence of the spiritual side of things. As soon as you shift to the 4D, you get much more sense of the spiritual side of things. Your spiritual senses, your psychic senses, connect directly to their spiritual side of the creation. Only in 3D you can dive into the place beyond the veil where things are not that clear. And that's the ultimate choice in the 3D. It's a choice to love God, to be spiritual, without the evidence. That's the test, the ultimate test. You are tested to choose without having the evidence. There's a trick of this game. You are the spirit dreaming that you are not. And you asking yourself, at which incarnation I will ultimately choose to love God? <laughs> As soon as you leave that dream, as soon as you wake up to the 4D, the choice is not there anymore. You have the evidence, so you cannot really choose. You choose based on the evidence. Atheist in 4D would be a rare case. Would be a very rare case. <laughs> Yet, the soul has its own focus of attention. And as you go higher and higher in dimensions, as you go to the spirit world, as you move into different levels of creation, you can grasp only that much of the creator. Only that much. You cannot see the whole creation because that view would burn you. You cannot absorb the whole creation. You can only get a glimpse of it. You can only feel united while not actually seeing it. You can only put dark glasses and then look in the eyes of God. You can look at the eyes of God only with dark glasses. Otherwise, you will be burned on any level. But yes, going higher and higher, you see more of how this dream is being created. You see more of the creator level of tasks. You see how the planets are being born. You see how the planets being, are being maintained. You see how the time is being created and maintained. That is a factory. A divine factory and as you go higher you get the opportunity not only to see but also to be involved and work in the creating the worlds creating the creations does it help do you have any clarifying questions Well, the explanation is, if we can call in 3D perfection, I completely understand. And 
my comment will be because it is such a endless process to finding Lord I, I, I don't wonder that the dark side that the dark side often reject the journey because it does take entire life entire our existence to to be with lord so the dark side takes them take maybe the the shorter sh uh, shortcut of uh not doing anything because it does it does take time so a patience and foremost to be humble and go forever finding yourself to find the place with Lord so I, I do have uh, love and compassion because of the process to a dark side because of the deep understanding so that will be my comment uh, after what you explained thank you thank you any more questions If anybody doesn't have question, I would like to mention a Brian dream. Uh, he had wonderful dream, and I don't know if Brian would like to explain that he was dreaming about Panchatattva, Lord Chitanya, and his associate. Brian, would would you like to ask about the dream? Um, yeah, it's. Oh man, I had I had the dream a while back. Um, it was like a very lucid dream, very very uh, realistic. I mean, I couldn't tell if I was awake or asleep. It was just so man, it was so real to me. Um, back in like two thousand nine, I had this dream where I heard this music. I was like, it looked like I was going down into a basement or something, like a dark. More, it, it felt like Atlantean or like um, uh, Egyptian time or something, but it was definitely in the past. And there was like this temple, and then off to the side there was like this road, this dirt road or something, around the area. And I was down this temple, but I came out of the temple, and then there was like this dirt road, and I heard this this music, and it was like. The best way I can describe it was like a dong ch 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 ching dong ch 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 ching, and it was some type of like Middle Eastern type music. I want to say either like Saudi Arabian type or like Egyptian type or something or hin even Hindu. I don't know some type of music, and so um, <clears throat> I heard I saw this 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 band out of the corner of my eye, like this traveling. It to me it was like a traveling band. There was one, like being some guy. He was playing the flute, and he was dressed in like an orange robe, <clears throat> and and then they had like a blue guy, a blue bean, had like like jewelry all over uh, itself, and one guy was ball headed, and then it had a lady, is like wrapped in like a white robe with like golden cufflinks, and like a golden belt or something. And she had a staff, and she was carrying a staff, and she she stopped the whole band. They saw me come out in the middle of the road like I was trying to throw myself in front of them to stop them. And when I stopped them, the lady, she looked at me, and she said, uh, we've had many lifetimes together, uh, you and I. And then she said, she looked over at one of the beans, like toward the bean, and she said, this one desires a healing. And immediately, like this white, almost like a tornado, but it was like a white tornado. It was circling the whole group and me, just just us, like nothing else. Like a field was put up around us, and nothing like a barrier, and nothing could like it was like a protection barrier. I felt, and it was just a whirlwind. It was just wild. And then the guy, this other being, after she said this one desires a healing, the being comes around from behind and he's got some type of instrument or something and he hits the back of my like touches the back of my back and it felt like a cattle prod it felt like this electricity shoot up my back like the kundalini energy and it went up my spine and it just a huge tingling sensation and i i could feel it and i it just like 
my body started vibrating and um yeah i just didn't know who that group was but then um uh leela here leila uh, she helped me understand that it might have been like um vishnu uh like uh some of the hindu uh, uh, like deities or something like um krishna and stuff like that like that group because it sounds very familiar and then i saw like years later i saw a picture of this group of this traveling band and they always have like instruments and the way that i saw the picture it, it looked kind of familiar these beans in the picture and the funny thing is i never saw any of those beans before i never studied that culture i never knew anything about them and i just had that dream and then years later i started looking at pictures and say oh my gosh those are the beans i saw in my dream like who are these beans and so yeah i was just wondering um who these groups who this group could be or something i never really it was just really powerful experience but ever since i had that contact with them like my tuition and my uh clairvoyance whatever you call it um the clairs have been like really enhanced like i'm my psychic abilities and stuff to connect with certain people you know it's just really interesting so I was just really happy to have that uh, that vision or that dream. I just wanted to share that. Beautiful. Um, Max is here. Um, I will I will shift back. It's just somehow I <laughs> I was able to come back by some reason. Uh, anyway, um, just a second. <clears throat> Thank you. So Brian. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit it right. Um, that is a secret here. It has been veiled for you. Now you you allow to penetrate that veil. Do your research. Connect closer. You're going in the right direction. Yes, there is a connection to creator beings within you. That connection is strong. And that's why you cannot clearly answer the question what is unique about you because it has been veiled. Now, as you discovered, as you have been given that image and that connection, you're welcome to explore it. Your, your, your guess is right. Yes, you're connected right. So. Just move towards these creator beings. They're real. They are benevolent. And you're closely connected to them. That is a spiritual line leading to them. I thank you for your sharing and your insights. They are true. Yes, yes. Thank you. Any more comments? I yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. Um, this is Michelle. Hey. Um, I was told many, uh, probably a couple of years ago, I have a guide. His name is Natabi. Natabi? He was Natabi. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is Indian in nature. I mean, in whatever race whatever you want to call it physicality, <laughs> physicality. yes and um he is one of my guides because he was my teacher in another lifetime and i was a supposedly an indian goddess which i don't know what that means but <clears throat> so i wanted to ask a little bit about that if you can connect to his energy and that era if that is related to the kind of yoga that you do and if i have a connection to the kind of yoga you teach and then i'll ask addendums after you have that answer thank you for asking <laughs> uh, here we hear the veil oh. and um 
a clear answer can say yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but to get more details through the veil, I need more justification from you. Give me more substance where I can help you. Okay. Well, the reason I want to tap into, I have a curiosity because the first time I ever experienced um, Kundalini in my body, first time I ever left my body, I was because I was doing a Kundalini yoga practice for pain and I left my body. And the second time, and then I adopted from a book I read, I was going through really, really difficult emotional time. And I was going from like one treatment center to another. And I was reading a book about this lady who went to India and she had to do this chant called Om Namah Shivaya. So I adopted her mantra and I would use it to try to call myself I would say it over and over and over again. Eventually, at some point, I would do this as a, my own practice, and I would sing, Om Namah Shivaya. Okay? So then Absolutely. that would be my that would be my practice, and then I would experience a lot of release, like a lot of letting go, a lot of tears. And also kundalini, like the effect, a very sexual feeling in my root chakra, like a highly, highly, like full body electricity feeling. So for me right now, my, I'm in a situation where I have overextended myself physically and I'm being told by my body, pay attention to self-care. And I've always done yoga. Always done yoga. My, body, my body, Lillian, and mute. Uh, please mute yourself, the second person. Uh, Michelle, please continue. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to formulate a best practice self-care situation because my body hurts. <laughs> and I know that this practice or this kind of yoga this venue is at least a huge part of one of my incarnations so since you are you and this is who max is channeling i thought i would tap into how i am connected to this how this will benefit me now if i should dig deeper into i don't know something along those lines yes I apologize <laughs> for the pain was caused. It wasn't intentional. It was your, it was an experiment. Your body is an experiment. Your spirits <laughs> try to do their best. And it just didn't go as expected. Your body is different. Your connection to the physical reality is imperfect. You were too advanced, <laughs> as many of you, but you specifically, Michelle, were a too advanced genetic construct to handle the energies and transformations. And it was hard for us to predict how it would happen because the future was not there. Their experiences, the pains, the lessons, the limitations you went through were unpredictable that's what you grabbed for surrounding matrix we try to help and we keep trying to help but it is basically the experiment which you made yourself as a soul and which went out of control <laughs> so take it easy take it easy we are here we are here to help there is still lots of help lots of love flow in your way for now, I can give you my energy. Try to catch it. I will give you a chant. I know okay. you said that you are you are well connected through the sound. So I will give my Max's Max's voice, and then through that voice, I will give you my energy. So 
just connect to it, tune into it, and it will be yours. That's it. That's it. And that's how I can help myself as uh, as me. <laughs> Here you go. <clears throat> just anyone else, you can connect to me as well. I give you my between Max's how do you call it the sine waves. There will be modulations which transdimensional modulations and fractal modulations which will deliver my energy it's up to you to tune into it and hold on to it and use it later so just basically remember that vibration and whenever you need invite it i'm yours my love okay. is yours oh yes Allah na 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 I Thank you. Yogananda, thank you so much. So did you know me? And do I have can you tell me my name at that time and what that time was? You see, the that's Pichabi. where the veil is. You're still beyond the veil. You're still in a dream where you got to make choices. I cannot oh, yeah? I cannot give their proofs, verifiable evidence on record. I cannot I you don't need it on the record. Vague generalizations are fine too. It's just a curiosity. Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. And as we develop, there are exceptions where we can give things, where we can release information when it is justifiable. But here, the voice is sufficient. Yes, it is sufficient. <laughs> you mean you are done with me? <laughs> uh, I know I'm never done with you. <laughs> <laughs> so what does it mean to be a, um, let's say a couple thousand years ago, what does that mean when they called somebody a goddess, you know? Um, that's, that's what it is. I don't know what that means. Um, is that just a word that says you have priority or status? Or does that mean something like a, you have more capacity to heal than the average Joe? Or does that mean you're better at sitting in the lotus position for longer periods of time? I mean, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the idea of being an embodiment of the divine energy taking on yourself a duty a responsibility to manifest the divine energy sometimes it's called bodhisattva sometimes it's called avatar sometimes it's called light worker but in general it is but often it is called Christ consciousness, but you are embodying, embodying, you come to the surface of the planet, embodying the divine energy, divine assignments. 
and uh, you don't necessarily have to be born you usually are born build your body first rise to the level and then you take on yourself the divine mission mission so that's and then you not only present yourself as manifestation of God you actually become it I see that is really interesting so that would be true for say I don't know I don't even know anything about Krishna but anybody who can give Shakti let's say so that would be one way that it presents kind of that form Yeshua would be another maybe many people that are listed in biblical texts Yes. Eastern Christian kind and then also in different other kinds and then but that is all basically come boils down to kind of the Christ consciousness energy yes okay that's really interesting Max oh. need to learn needs to learn more of this wars uh, he is kind of ignorant <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we all have our, you know, <clears throat> things. So, the, um, how, when, in, in, in my current vessel, like, I, I haven't studied, I'm pretty, I tend to be pretty lazy with this mixture of assimilating energies for healing and changing from a very dense, like, pattern driven fear-based life to something different um, in the studying of the history of things so you know I've been easily my body easily does yoga like it's very it comes very naturally to me and I do not do it every day although I feel that my body would probably appreciate it if I did <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess so I'm just trying to find some balance I'm not, that is not my strong suit balance is not my exactly. strong suit you are reading my mind I'm already sending you that yes absolutely <laughs> go ahead so like I'm even finding out through the situation I'm in that the food that we are sold as human beings by corporations is basically a lot of poison and carcinogens and so now I'm having to really like even though I already knew that now I really know it because I have a friend who's like collapsing his whole body is eating itself basically through multiple sclerosis and so what can I do to be a help okay so now I'm gonna research and I can find out that food is medicine well I knew that in the back of my mind but I'm lazy again and I don't want to like give up the things I like right so it ah, here we go. yes yeah. so now it's becoming obvious to me and you know through his dis-ease that there's a solution like yes and that clean eating is in fact important Michelle like even though you've been knowing this for two years now pay attention yes so I don't know maybe you would like to speak to because all of us here um, you know you know we all we all go through our self delusion <laughs> like yeah well it's good for her to do that but I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing whatever I want yes it I, is yeah, go ahead. Cause, well, a lot of times I would do things like say, well, I'm, I do Reiki, so I just put Reiki on it and I can change the molecular structure of it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. All right, so here is the problem with learning. Part of you learned very well that this is good for you. That food is good for you, that good for you. And then part of you learns that that food is not good for you. Another food is good for you, right? So it is about being split, a split, not even personality, split value systems. You have contradictory value systems within yourself. This food is good and this food is giving me energy. Like sweets, obviously they give you energy, right? You become clearer, like 
like cigarettes obviously give you energy, you become clearer. But the other side knows, no, 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 it's the other way around. So it is about integrating what you already know. I suggest <laughs> it's, it's not biased, but it is a, an easiest way for you. Try, consider, take on yourself an assignment of cooking Indian without hot pepper. Hot pepper use only as a spiritual cleansing medicine once in a while, rarely. But everything else, not hot, not spicy, 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 not can cayenne. Ask, because can cayenne is why? good. Say again. Can I ask why not the cayenne? Uh, because of the design of your body, because of your white skin. Uh. Simply, that's a bummer. And because you weren't <laughs> born, you weren't born in that culture. So, cayenne is new to Indian spice. It came from surprise from America, right? Only oh. about half a half a thousand years ago, right? So, until then, it was much more balanced. Mm -hmm. So, consider that: no wheat, no cow, <laughs> no cow meat. So. Consider that. Experiment with that. Okay. And now, go ahead. No, I, I am. Actually, I made curry last night, but it had meat in it, so. <laughs> you have to adjust it to your own body's needs. It's hard Our to next... get a lot enough calories for as much energy as I expend with, like, an Indian diet. I've been literally going to buy vegan cupcakes. <laughs> Just so I can have more calories. <laughs> and that's another problem. You possibly need to slow down. Yes. Well, my body is making sure that I'm doing that because I feel terrible. <laughs> uh, being too neurotic is not good for the physicality. <laughs> too neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> that is an accurate description, perhaps. <laughs> so I'm sending you... Another wave of energy now, accept uh -huh. it. It is the energy of okay. peace. Uh -huh. You need to slow down once in a while and come to the balance of peace. And even as you move, <coughs> you can still live intensely, but not in physical. You can intensely be connected to the spirit. So shift your intensity from exhausting your physicality to intensely being connected from the spirit and exchanging with the spirit on the run so that's the idea be love, go ahead, go ahead. via meditation you mean meditation on the run okay. as you are doing your daily things mm -hmm. in between your meditations when you're actually being physical mm -hmm. being still physically not physically, spiritually connected. So that's the idea. Move, shift your intensity from being physical, physical to physical with peace and me, intense meditation on the run. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite as you run, mantra? As you dance, as you do your daily work, as you speak now, as you do anything, be more intensely connected to the spirit. And that will rebalance your... could rebalance your... Your body and uh, body, spirit, space, time, all this dichotomies. Would you recommend a mantra? You, that would be helpful. Hold on a second. Still look for your own mantra. I cannot give okay. it to you. It's for okay. you. I cannot give it to you now physically through voice. I can. Okay help you discover your own mantra and again it really depends how you do your mantra do your mantra in a less neurotic way do your <laughs> mantra in a more spiritually peaceful connected way where the main energy flows through the spirit and less energy is coming through to self-destruction <laughs> <laughs> slow down your time you okay yeah that's your challenge you until now you used the time in one way 
now start becoming friends with time again through the mantra work on becoming friends with time and manifest through respect mm -hmm. and through core operation with time through collaboration with time space time continuum is your creation use your mantra to adjust the space time creation of your of yours okay allah i'm sending you peace the vibration of peace allah maham. It's up to you to accept it. Amma, 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 Place your palms on your heart right. and accept peace. Hum, 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 hum. Hum, hum. Um, uh, <sighs> now I suggest you keep that vibration of peace with you and invite others to speak. I invite others to speak much like I invite you. others to speak and I suggest you be silent for a moment just to keep that vibration. Michelle silent others speak. I invite others to unmute or type their questions for uh, for Lila to read. Hello. Hello. You have two people. Let's go female first namaste yogananda this is yay. shakti yes 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 hi nice to hear your voice sending you blessings today thank you so much for your peace your love yes yes shakti thank you thank you peace much peace much love much balance to you There is something with the spiritual interference to your electronic connection. Try to do something to speak in a different way. Some um Yes, now good. Is it good now? Yep. I want to thank you for your presence. I feel it more and more. Thank and you for accepting. Yes. And um, I finally have good luck to uh, this week. I have I found a new job, and um, I will be calling upon you to give me strength to support me uh, physically to be able to do this uh, good work. I'll be working in a garden center with plants, and um, and uh, I will be a little less present uh into these uh, webinars because i'll be working more often so i wanted to hug you and i uh, sent you blessings and um thank you so much wow beautiful i realize that you manifested it you manifested it it's the peace which helped you to manifest it when i send you my energy it's not me doing it i just do the step towards you and then you connect to that energy and basically you download the code download the program which helps you to manifest things so it's you really reading the book 
I open the book for you, and then you read in it. That's the mechanism of manifestation. I will send you my blessing now again through the voice. Accept it. Breathe it in. Om Aham. <laughs> Thank you for good news. Um the male wanted to speak. Hello. Yes. Hi, it's nice to meet with you again. Is it Pete? Yes. Nice to hear your voice. It's nice to hear from you. Um, I've My questions for today are is that I've been feeling a bit... Um, uh, pale, so to speak, and I was wondering about, like, is there some internal metaphysical condition that I'm experiencing? Oh, you mean pale? What, what kind of pale? Energetically. And vibrationally. I don't understand. Please clarify. Pale is a, a white color. Are you low on blood pressure? It's more of, um, it's hard to, it's unexplainable for my end. And I was wondering if I could, because it feels like I'm actually um, um, experiencing a lot of pain. Oh, you said pain, not pale. I'm sorry. So you're pain in pain, right? Painful. Yes. Okay. How does it come? What way does it come? Through the, underneath the solar plexus area. And what do you do with it? I channel that energy down to my solar, from my heart chakra to the solar plexus and order to heal myself. Are you capable of running? Yes. Are you jogging, running, doing physical exercise? I've been... Um... I've been pushing myself a little too hard. Oh, I see. How much time do you spend in nature per day? A lot less. <laughs> Say, give me a number. A four. Four hours a day? No, it's more like a lot, like around 30 minutes to a minute, 30 minutes to eight minutes a day. I see. Right. So I welcome your idea of solving all physical problems through spiritual means, but Often a shortcut is to really solve physical problems through spiritual means using physical means. <laughs> that sounds confusing. So go to the nature and do your meditations in the nature. Do, do the meditations that in, involve physical activity. Like yoga, like any other physical exercise, do it spiritually. Do your physical exercise spiritually, but be in the nature <laughs> and do it outside. You need to get their fresh air, fresh energy from outside. And uh, go away from Wi-Fi. Turn off your 
cell phone for a while, so there is less electromagnetic interference. Be closer to the nature. Wi-Fi, Max knows, fades very fast away. So even going away for five minutes away from your house reduces the electromagnetic pollution. So just step out to the green, foresty, bushy area if you can. Thank you so much. Um, I've had, do you mind if I could ask or for connection to my guardian angel? Yet yeah, I had a connect, close connection recently due to my um, um, predicament that I was in uh, just yesterday. Remind me more, I don't know the details. Please give me more. Um, yesterday I was emanating a dark aura and I was actually um, seeing myself defending uh, against, uh, defending dark en entities against light for some reason. I'm not so sure a bunch about the details. Wow, that is profound. Explain me more. It's that um, I've been um, recently protect. I've been protecting these lower entities because I was connecting to my my how you would call it the dark night of the soul, and I was one. And I was trying to use that part of me to get by a lot of, through a lot of uh, hardships or a lot of things. And since then, I've now realized I was protecting myself again, protecting dark entities from, from light energy, so to speak. That's okay. Don't be too worried about it. It is part of your spiritual design. It's part of your job. You're still caring. You're still protecting. You're still healing. The creation is, desire, is designed in layers. And part of the creative process is to protect different layers of the reality from each other. So there were leakages of higher dimensions into lower dimensions, which were damaging the lower dimension. It's not that entities are negative. It is just the vibration is lower. They're in a different stage of the, not stage, a different layer of the creation. Like the 3D is protected from the 4D, from 5D through a veil. If there was no veil, there wouldn't be 3D. It wouldn't be destroyed. So protecting 3D from the 4D energies is a positive necessary function so you did well don't worry about protecting something from something of higher dimension something from higher vibration it is part of the creative process it's acceptable yes you are connected to the creative energies you connected to uh, supported administrative spiritual energies and consciousnesses. To the fairies, gnomes, elementals, and other consciousnesses of supportive administrative side of the reality. They are absolutely necessary. They serve the purpose of helping the souls helping the incarnated souls to go through uh, through their evolution and ascension so thank you for your assistance in that area as well when you speak about your guardian angel realize that strictly speaking it is a guardian consciousness which is consciousness which is not necessarily of angelic kind. It could be connected to the angelic kind, but it's not necessarily an angel. It's more like a guardian. 
It's a guide, guardian guide. It could be called also higher self. As I said, connect to your peers, connect to your friends. You have that talent and that's part of your life path to be a, a glue, a connector, a networker, someone who cherishes and manifests the groups of friends. So be working with your friends and help them to to be more glued together, to become a better group. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yoganana, can I share something? Yes. It is Shanti. Um, I'd just like to clarify to help some people who don't go out into nature much because I wrote to uh, um, going into nature does not always mean having to drive a long way to go into the woods. It's just a simple thing like going outside, putting your feet on the grass, and give thanks to Mother Earth. Um, that is what going into nature uh, is uh, to move from your house, cement area. Uh, go touch a tree. Say you love it. That is nature. It doesn't always mean going in the woods just to go and just go to hear the birds sing their magic. Breathe the air. Smile to the sky. You never know what angelic invisible being is there to bless you. To me, uh, that is what going into nature is, is to just move away from the cement area and just go and give thanks to Mother Earth for all the blessing and the love that she gives one absolutely thank you thank you yes sometimes it is just enough to open the window yes it, you don't have to drive far like driving far for many hours to be there for five minutes is not efficient whatever is efficient you still have to be practical yes Thank you, I've, thank you, Yoganda. I've, um, the main part, my reason is that I'm very busy. Um, there are a lot of the society always has you, has me going around and not, and distracting me from going into nature from time to time. But you go outside of your apartment, right? Yeah. That is already good enough. But when you travel, be connected to the nature. When you step to the fresh air, be connected. Just pay attention. Connect to the trees and bushes, shrubs, grass, air, ground. Just spend a second for the meditation. As you see, it, be connected. Intend to be connected. Intend to exchange. It is part of your dream, part of your part of your creation. You create all the world through your dream within your soul. So pay attention to creating the nature as well. You create it. You are co-creator of the nature. So pay attention and co-create it. It is necessary for you to pay attention as a light worker. As a creator being, it's important to be to be there in your mind, to be connected in your mind. The more you stay connected to the technology, the less you are in the nature. So it is the focus of your attention. Just shift the focus of your attention to the living things, plants, animals, water, air, elements. Okay, I'm running low on energy. Uh, let's call for more questions, whatever is urgent. I will take the questions and then I will start leaving. Thank you, Yoganda. Thank you. Marlene, yes. can you unmute? Yes. Hello. Yes. 
Yes, I have a question for you. Um, it came to my attention somebody who has this uh, sy uh, syndrome called the red syndrome. Uh, what do you suggest for me to talk to or to tell the family of this little girl? She's only seven years old, and it seems like she's not doing very well. What syndrome is that? Red syndrome. Remind me what it is. It's a R, -R E T T. Is uh, some kind of disorder uh, where the person doesn't grow anymore and it just kind of undevelop themselves and they start getting a, a lot of physical problems and mental problems. They can't talk. They can't grow. They can't understand. I mean, something like that. And it's a muta mutation. <clears throat> I see. Thank you. This, um, this kind of things remain in the reality. It usually is a choice of a soul to incarnate with such a disorder. It's not by chance. The reasons for that could be different. Sometimes they just want a short life. Sometimes they need to fix something in their karma. It is usually a choice of the soul to be incarnated with that. And again, as usual, take it easy. Just take a spiritual perspective. It is all part of the incarnation cycle. It's all part of the... of being kind, of being loving, and taking things as they are. It is part of nature. You don't get upset. Maybe you shouldn't get upset every night that the sun goes down and the night comes. Same thing with the untimely things as child sickness. It's okay. It's all right. Be in peace. Send your love without allowing yourself to go down in sadness. Experience empathy without damaging yourself. Still be strong. This soul will incarnate again. And this is it. Be loving and look at it, at it as an opportunity to be of assistance. Same with the parents, same with everyone around. Just take it easy, be loving and kind, and take it easy. There is nothing else to be done except being loving and kind. Thank you. Any more questions before I go? We have one brief question in the chat as to which Yogananda you are. Are you Paramahansa? Paramahansa Yogananda? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Yay. <laughs> it's about, you should, or I'm going to, I'm going to making an assumption. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But can you tell us some spices that are super helpful for body balance? Like, for instance, all my joints hurt. So best spices and or herbs for that. Many people have that problem. Just a second. You see, the spice by itself could be helpful a bit, but it is the state of mind, the state of the spirit, the state of being neurotic, which causes this disbalance. You cannot just plug into a spice and decide and, and have it solved. 
Okay, let's say I wasn't neurotic. What would be the correct spice to be helpful with painful joints or lack of cartilage or bone on bone? <laughs> See, there's a Western understanding that the symptom can be treated with a drug. Now we just replace the chemical drug with a natural drug and decide that it is a, a cure, which is a just, uh, I would say, outdated way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. uh, the more integral way is Eastern medicine, Ayurveda, mm -hmm. Indian, Chinese, traditional Chinese media, I'm losing the connection. Traditional Chinese medicine, traditional Eastern medicines, traditional Western medicines, old medicines of holistic treatment. It is taking the structure, taking the whole shape of the body and finding where did it shift from the balance and bringing it back to the balance through holistic approach a little bit of spice here a little bit of energetic reiki yoga treatment here a little bit of mantra a little bit of meditation finally getting tuned into the balance you see the joint pain is the overall stupidity of the immune cells they become overactivated they become neurotic they go and shoot each each other and shoot everyone around they come to your joints and start the fire there they just panic it is a panic of immune system they decide that joints are infected and start killing the infection which doesn't exist there it is there non-specific it is neurotic police huh. it is neurotic police so how do you calm your police and tell them now go home get asleep and then look for real criminals not us right real <laughs> criminals so how do you do this through restoring the balance through breathing through intake of water mm -hmm. through clarification and recrystallization of the system it is something which goes through the neural system it is rebalancing the waves of heart and mind in the neural system rebalancing the vibrations of heart and mind not only during the meditation but the, during the times between the meditations <laughs> so yes if you can you should start start learning ayurveda okay. and understand the idea of these balances okay for every person there is a different formula of this balance mm -hmm. and every person requires a different push some need to be pushed that way some need to be pushed that way and it is multi-dimensional there, there are about seven major dimensions in which you have to be rebalanced so an experienced ayurvedic healer or traditional chinese healer would be of help but ultimately you have to understand what they tell you ultimately you have to be embodying that through your body you have to rebalance through your body so you your understanding is essential so are you talking when you say the seven dimensions are you talking about the seven layers that make up the human body or field like our physical body, our mental body, our emotional body, our spiritual body, and then the other three that are above that? Yes and no. It overlaps somewhat, but it, these are two different systems. They overlap somewhat. They use the same concepts, but the measures in the physiology are somewhat different from measures in energy. It's it's a bit different. It's more like about balancing in of liver spleen energies not exactly the organ liver but liver energies spleen energies heart energies and so on so that's a little different system but it is closely connected to the spirit bodies and to reiki chakras it is closely connected it is the same system just taken at a different angle 
So are you talking, when you're talking about the liver and the spleen system, is, are you referring to your Ayurvedic medicine? It's more like the wording of traditional Chinese. Okay, more of the wording of traditional with that. And did, okay, so I have been going to get acupuncture. Is that Chinese or Japanese medicine? Both of them have that. It's up to, uh, but it is very, yes. As you work on it, it could be either. But as you work on it, you have to match what they send you. They give you the tune-in. Tune in. They give you the antennas yeah. to the right places, but then it's up to you to take the energy in Correct. and to rebalance yourself. And as you learn that that rebalancing, energy rebalancing process, as you learn it, you could then reproduce it by just touching the right place. And after yeah. that, you can reproduce it just without touching, just by by okay. habitual movement of the energy. You don't even okay. have to do anything, go to doctor or even touch. But okay. start from understanding what do they do. Okay. And accepting it. And learning to achieve the same rebalance in habitually. Mm -hmm. It becomes second nature. Okay. Allah Any more questions before I go? We have one from the YouTube chat. All right. From Richard Hausman. Let's see if I can find it again. All right. Uh, he just asked if he, if, uh, the, if he has any questions from his higher self or spirit guides. We don't have a dialogue with him, so I have to give him something. Just a second. Hmm. Yes. So, Richard, your current state of affairs, current state of learning, current challenges are focused on power. So, connect to the orange color. Connect to the orange color and connect to the green color. The orange being the color of the solar plexus, and the green color is the color of the heart. And play with these two energies, taking turns with the energy of love and acceptance and of heart, and the energy of power and willpower of the solar plexus. Connect to the sun, as a symbol of power, connect to that sunlight and build your willpower in a positive direction and connect to the green color of the plant and use it to expand your empathy and intuition. That is all. Anything else? Hello? Yes. Yes. Um, Namaste, Yogananda. This is uh, Marlena. Hello, Marlena. Did we meet before in this chat? This is my first uh, time. Thank you. Thank you. Allow me a few questions, if I may. The first yes. one is um, when you reconnected with Babaji, 
what was your purpose at that particular time? <laughs> just childish, childish desire. I just wanted crave for that, as you do. Yes. Uh, I wanted a miracle. I just wanted a miracle. And that was one of the best ideas of miracle which I had. I wanted I wanted I wanted to be home. I wanted to be reunited. I wanted to be with closest dearest friends. And that's what was my connection. I hoped for that and uh, <laughs> childish desire just just pure craving for a physical manifestation of God. That's all. You might want to unmute yourself again. Hello? Yes. Okay, you just read my heart. Um, yes, I also have this craving of connecting with all these beautiful uh, warriors of light and light workers. And so thank you for that, uh, for that information. My other question, if I may, is um, I will be going back to India and somehow I have this particular, um, there's this dr something driving me to go to Darjeeling. Um, can you give me a little bit of more like input on why I, I have this connection with this particular place that I haven't been before? And what would be the purpose of this particular assignment? All right, Max here, we have the problem with the veil. <laughs> you want a miracle right away, right here. So um, let me see. Now now, I, now it's Max. I, I have still a Yoganad on the line. It just, these miracles are not easy to, to pass through the veil. Just a second. <laughs> hmm. So I see the image of a white tiger, white tiger, <laughs> and the girl just playing with a white tiger, happy girl playing with a white tiger, they're friends, whatever it means, um, just a second. I see things which I don't understand, so there is... Uh, Hard to translate. Um, your purpose. Hold on a second. I will ask what is your purpose. Mm. You are the tiger, not the girl. <laughs> and the girl. But, but primarily the tiger. The tiger. Um, it is, a, the, again, as we mentioned just a second before, it is about willpower and ability to manifest. It is the strength of the kingly, kingly kind, royal kind. Yeah, the strength of royal kind, reconnection with your strength of a royal kind. Being, what's that word? Benevolent monarch. Yeah, connecting to the energy of a benevolent monarch, reconnecting with that energy. Maybe you were a monarch there, I'm not sure, but take it as a suggestion. And here is a symbol for you, very simple. Five, just mirror image of five. That would be a symbol for you. That's all. You can unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I have an upcoming um, assignment, um, galactic assignment, Yogananga. I don't understand. I didn't hear this again. Which assignment? In the, in about six weeks, uh, I have another galactic assignment that yes. I, I will be traveling again. Uh, do you have any guidance for me for this particular one, please? 
would you like to give me more information? Um, I will be going to Bosnia. Yay! Beautiful. Okay. So, what is the assignment, or is it a secret? Do you, want, do you don't want to? Well, we put we, it on record. That's it exactly. <laughs> um, is there anything that you can uh, give me, or information you can give me in particular to this one? Yes, um, there is a male energy which would be cal cal now you can mute yourself. Uh, there will be a male energy which would help you. So, just a friend specifically for that assignment, connect to a male energy. Obviously, I'm not sure actually if it is a man or woman, it's just the energy which is male. A male energy which you would need to, to do collective work with. And the child energy. The child could be local. So I guess it's father, mother, child, tr trinity, which you would need to, to temporary, for a temporary assignment, for temporary work, you need to create this, not necessarily physical, it, it doesn't have to be at the same time. You can collect this men's and men, male, male, male energy, at one point, link to it, connect to the child's energy at another point. So basically, expect a child to come and give you a blessing. Expect a man to work with you. And then that trinity would do the, the work. Thank you. This particular male energy, is, uh, is it related to the, a specific archaeologist? It's up to you. It's your choice. You just need components which you can assemble on the fly. Thank you. Um, kombucha. Um, I've been making this uh, the kombucha um, from the mushroom. Um, is it conducive where with where I'm at energy wise at this particular moment, please? This is Max speaking. As soon as I hear some unknown words, I have to intervene and please explain to me what is it. I, I the word is familiar, I just forgot what it is. Kombucha is a, a is a Japanese mushroom that we use um, that is fermented and um, we make a an like an elixir with it. Um this is basically what kombucha is. Got it. Got it. So, okay. what is the question? My question was: Is it um, is it uh, for this particular time, with my energy wise, is it good for me to um, to keep taking it and making it because I I make it myself. <laughs> It is uncertain, but more likely no than yes. Experiment with it, and uh, so far it's more likely no than yes. But it's again, it's a choice. It's it's not prohibitive, but uh, more likely no than yes. Could you be more specific uh, as to the reasons why, please? Just energetic, it's not clear compatibility. I, I cannot explain in more detail. Just it is, it gives you a certain vibration which you don't necessarily have to use. It's your choice to use it or not, but you, you can be fine without it. That's all. Thank you for the clarification. And my last question, please. Um, when I got up this morning, I felt that I need clear. I need a clearing in my light bodies. Um, could you um, help me in this regard at this moment, please? Oh yes, <clears throat> that is easy. <laughs> smile, smile. Take it easy. I will give you a chant, um, and I will just help you to clear your light bodies. Connect to that vibration. Take it in. 
As you relax, okay, that's what I'm doing. I will give everybody about five minute meditation, and it is is a meditation for clearing the light bodies. Allah and after that we'll just disconnect. Uh, so goodbye, everybody. Five minutes meditation, or maybe ten minutes, whatever it goes, and then. And then we will disconnect. Um, 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 um. Everyone, please mute yourself. Um, 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 um. So sit comfortably, sit comfortably, close your eyes, put your palms on your heart. To clear the darkness from your light bodies, you need to cry. So feel the sadness in your heart, feel the sadness in your body. And you don't have to physically cry, but connect to the idea of crying, connect to the idea of rain, connect to the idea of shower, of the love energy flowing in you and cl clarifying you, clearing you, washing out the darkness, washing out the tension, washing out the anger, washing out the fear. Remember yourself being a child. And when things happen to you, you didn't take it in, you just cried. And with a cry, you released the darkness because you couldn't hold it in yourself. That's what you do. You just don't hold the darkness in yourself anymore. You let it go. It was just natural, natural. There was no tension, no fear. You were your child. And if things happened to you, you would cry. If things happened to you, you would laugh. You were natural. You wouldn't hold things into you. Peace, peace. The feeling of peace is a peace. The feeling of peace is ease, ease, easy now, easy now. Peace, easy. Just relax. Feel tired. <laughs> That's maybe first time you hear. Just feel tired and think about, oh gosh, I'm tired. I just need to relax. I cannot run anymore. I am tired. Oh gosh. Easy now, easy now. Just feel that. There is no need to hurry anymore. Because 
you cannot hurt anymore. You need to stop sometime. Allah, Allah, feel easy. Allah, 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 Allah. Whatever, 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 whatever happens. Now you are tired. Now you need to relax. Ammahayana, ammahana, ummahayana, ummahana. Golden rain of divine love is pouring onto you and washing your worries away. You come back to your child, mo child mood, child state. Allahayana, ummahana, ummahana, ummahana. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Just smile. Imagine yourself smoking a cigarette. Not really smoking, just smoking a cigarette and whatever. You just feel tired and the rain is dropping on you. Allah, 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 Allah. Don't smoke. Just imagine yourself being relaxed, relaxed. That state of relaxation. Allah, oh, uh -huh, oh. Just the energy is coming your way. Huh? You just wake up to the energy. You are filled with energy. Huh? Allah, 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 Allah. Oh, here is the energy. Huh? Ah. Ah. Here is the energy. Ah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Don't be afraid of death. <laughs> this life is just a dream. Death will come someday. Now you need to relax. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Amahanaya Amaha Amma. Take it easy. Now we'll disconnect and you can stay in a relaxed state as long as you can. And then you will come back, back, come back, back to life. And there you will be cleared, clean, and you will have new energy and new protection. But now still stay relaxed. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.